Good morning, uh, Pastor Rob here. I uh, just wanted to check in with you this morning. I know it's been a little while. Uh, the first thing right out the gate is I want to just say congratulations to the Doyas, the World Series champions. Yes, finally, after so many years. Uh, I was told last night that I was 20 years old last time the Dodgers won. Thank you for that. But uh, that's not why I'm here, but I'm telling you, uh, I'm, I'm excited about that big Dodger win. I just wanted to catch up a little bit and uh, share some of the thoughts that are going through my mind. And uh, the first thing that I want to share is a uh, verse from actually uh, a chapter uh, from uh, the book of Psalm. And I was thinking um, about this because actually I read this in my devotions last week, but this Psalm has been sticking with me. And I can imagine David, just normal human being. I know we, we look at him and we hear that he's a man after God's own heart and we put him on a pedestal sometimes. But the truth is, as we delve into his life, we also see that he had his flaws. Uh, he had made his mistakes. And so I, I just me personally, uh, as he penned or sang these uh, psalms, I picture him maybe at the end of the day um, after facing some physical battles um, uh, during wartime and his leadership there, or maybe just maybe some internal battles that we know that David had. And maybe it's his time of reflection. And like I said, maybe he's singing these psalms, maybe he's writing them down. But uh, I picture that uh, as he writes Psalm 25. And I, I can relate because I, I wonder if even at the end of the day, as he's reflecting, if he struggled sometimes, like, man, God, this life is hard. Or God, hallelujah, praise your name, or somewhere in between. And so I just love this about David and the Psalms. So let me read Psalms, 120, uh, Psalms 25 to you and see, see what you think. David writes, uh, In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. And again, it'd be really easy to run right by that, but but maybe he really had to think about that. Maybe he was struggling with trusting God at that moment. In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you, I love that, no one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. But shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Then he says this, show me. Show me your ways, O Lord. Again, I don't know if this is a desperation, but I love that. Wherever David is at in his life, he's saying, God, I, I, I want to trust you. And I'm asking you to show me your ways. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truths. And teach me, for you, for you are God my Savior. And my hope, and there's that word again, my hope is in you. And this is what is just so powerful, and I guess is what I'm wanting to uh, emphasize. My hope is in you all day long. That's powerful. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and your love. I hope those words have encouraged you as they've encouraged me, as they've literally been stuck in my heart and my brain over this last week. I don't know what you're walking through. I don't know if it's good, if it's hard, if it's difficult, if it's boring, exciting. I don't know. But I love those words. I trust in you, God. With that, um, I've had to to trust in God in ways that I've never had to trust before in, in leadership and in my personal life. And so maybe that's why those words are so significant to me today. But one of those things is, is as a church and as the leader of West Valley Christian Church, I've, I've had to trust in God during this unique time. And I use that word intentionally, unique. We've had to reimagine church here at West Valley Christian Church. And so part of what I want to share in closing here is just, again, some of my heart on how grateful I am for this body, 
this local body of believers that continues to try and be light, not perfect, but light uh, through these challenging times. Our online service is one of those reimagining. I never thought we would be having church out on a lawn. But I want to say this again, as I've said before, we are incredibly grateful for the lawn that God has provided for us. Uh, we could never imagine how God would use this grass for his glory. But we've sat out there in 100 degree weather and we sat out there in 60 degree weather last week for the first time, which I think I would choose uh, between the two, the 60. But it's amazing how every week, every week, there's more and more people out there. We last weekend had over 200 people in our services out on the lawn. That's, that's over a third of our normal attendance during this time of the year. We continue to have an amazing presence online also, which I'm incredibly grateful for. Because one of the things we've said from the very beginning is we're ready when you're ready. And so some people are ready to come live in social distance on the lawn and some people aren't. So I love that we have these two different avenues to continue to be the church and share God's message. There's so much I could share on that, but I'll leave it there. Lastly, um, I just love that we reimagined. Uh, one of our big outreaches to our community is a Harvest Festival on Halloween. We'll have 1,200 people attend that. It's free, fun, and safe for the kids. Um, the easy decision would have been to cancel it because of all the, the, the laws that are out there around COVID. But our team reimagined. And so we will have a drive through event this Saturday on Halloween from 1 to 4 on our campus for the children in our community. And I'm so grateful for all those that uh, have participated in putting it together and that will participate in making it a great event. Also, Celebrate is another big event where we have a big Thanksgiving together out in, um, the, in November. And we celebrate all the decisions at our church for Jesus Christ and all that God has done. And we do this with a big meal and a big event inside the church. Well, again, it would have been easy to cancel that, but we reimagined it. And we're having a huge Celebrate event on our lawn, picnic style. Uh, we're serving prepackaged Chick-fil-A. That's right. Chick-fil-A. And uh, if you can't eat that stuff, then you could, we're encouraging you to bring your own food. But we're going to celebrate all that God's done. And uh, we are so grateful for that. Last but not least, I, I want to draw your attention to my computer screen. And um, you'll see uh, a picture here. And uh, last year, you may or may not know that we purchased some land in uh, the slums of Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, Pastor Greg Green and I went there uh, a few years ago ourselves, and I'll, I'll tell you, it, it ruined me in a good way and a bad way uh, to see what was going on in the slums there. And God has used that to where we purchased some land uh, through Missions of Hope Ministry. We were able to identify a pastor. And the picture that you're looking at is the pastor, William, and his uh, family. And then you're going to see the building, the church building that's being built there. Well, I am happy to tell you, West Valley Christian Church, you've helped be a part of a church that opened up last Sunday for the very first time. And I am so excited that we've been able to partner with Missions of Hope and, and other organizations to be able to continue to bring light into this amazing area of, of the slums. It's called Gita Thuru, and we are so grateful to be partnering uh, with, uh, again, uh, Mary and Wallace with Missions of Hope and also with Pastor William. And I, I, I've been texting back and forth with Pastor after his very first service last Sunday. And I, I just would love to quote him with this. He said, awesome, joyous moment in regards to their first uh, celebration in, in this new building. It's not completely built. He says we still got more to do, but we're using it already. So West Valley, that's my heart right now. I mean, there's so much I could share, but I'm so grateful that even though the doors are closed, the church is still alive and you are making a big difference. Let's continue to trust God and let's praise him for the things that I've shared that he's doing in this local body. God bless you. Have a great day. Go Doyas.